Okay, back again. So we left off here with the uh, year of order date on the color shelf so we can see that each year, so this is 2014, the red line, we can follow the red line, how that changed, and then compare it to 2013. See that, okay, you had a little bit better of a September and so forth. So if you click any of these values, it highlights it. It's a pretty cool feature. Now, if we simply right click and say quick table calculation running total, we can see that it's adding up the values year uh, month over month. And then let's add back in sales there. And when you have two different measures on a row, what it does is it just creates a different visualization for each one. So we could just, you know, we could just keep adding them here and it'll just keep adding them down there. But um, I'm just going to take that one off. But if we want to have them on the same axis, and I don't think I need to do this right now. No, I don't, I'm not doing this right now, but I'll go ahead and show you anyways. Uh, if you do want to make it on the same axis, you right click the second pill and you say dual axis. And so it'll create the same, the same chart. Uh, notice that it, it 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 changes the axis on one. It has the running sales. Let me switch that around. So here we have the sales, and here we have the running sales, but they're on totally different scales. So it looks all all uh, jarbled up there. Um, if you right click on one of the axis and say synchronize axis, then we can get the exact same scale across there. So this, this really doesn't uh, work as a view. It works better when it's not a dual axis because you're able to see, to distinguish more clearly. And if you click on 2014, you can see how it went month over month and then how that running total, how it, uh, how it accelerated through the year. Okay, um, so we covered that one already. Uh, the, rank, uh, the rank of products is... Um, this is just uh, getting you to, and I think some of sales. So there's now a rank quick quick calculation. I think I had it where I had you create a table calculation, uh, uh, a calculated field rather, using the table calculation. So to do that, you just um, let me just create that from scratch. If you go to that carrot up there and say create calculated field then you have these table calculation functions and there's a lot of them and they get kind of complex so you can do some you can do a lot of different things with these but we're just going to stick to the basics uh, for this course um, but the rank function and then within the rank you can have whatever measure at whatever aggregation level you want to rank it um, so but this one you really don't need to you could just say quick table calculation and then say rank and then now they'll be equal, okay? Uh, when you do that, you need to compute it using table down because we're trying to compute these. Now, one thing I'll mention about these com this compute using with the table um, options here or the pane is that it's really directional based on the uh, based on the way. Uh, you have the table set up so that if you hit this rotate button here or the swap button, you're, uh, it's going to be all out of order. So now it's going to be ranking it by the year rather than by the product name because your rank, it, so you, now your compute using is done table across. Uh, so, actually, when you swap it, it keeps the table calculation the same. That's pretty interesting. So, it's using compute table down, and then when you swap it, it automatically knows to change to table across so that it keeps the same way. But if you want to uh, make it so that it doesn't matter about the direction of the way that you have it set up, you can change it so that it, uh, let me swap it back, so that it uh, calculates it based on the variables instead. So if you see at the bottom, outside of those table and pane functions, or even cell, you have order date and product name, and those are the two variables that we have on here. So if we compute using the order date, we'll see that it's now doing it by year. And then we change that to, oops, 
if we change that to product name, now it's going to give us the ranking by product name. Okay. So that's just to really kind of show you how, how these table calculations are working. They're usually directional, but if you change the structure of that table, um, you can easily get confused when you're using this. Um, uh, the last part I'll cover is this Pareto chart. Um, this is uh, this is the answer for it, and it's a dual axis chart. So probably should have covered that dual axis when I went over this. But these are um, it's pretty easy to build. Um, the only thing that's tricky about it is that this table calculation has um, it has a secondary calculation. So let me go ahead and duplicate this as a cross tab. No, that didn't work too well. Delete that. I'll just show you how, how to build this real quick. So if we just take product name and let's see, is that sales? Yeah, it's sales. Okay, so let's just double click sales and by default we get a bar chart with the total sales and uh, double click product name. Now they're out of order here. Uh, this little drop down menu fits your visualization to your uh, either the width or the height. I, I like to do the entire view. So now you can see that you can't, for every bar, you can't see what it is, but if you hover over it, you can see what the product name is. But we would just want to order these in, uh, let's see, sort. Um, oh, I need to sort this. So I right click product name and hit sort and say descending field, sum of sales. So it automatically knows to use the variable that you have in, in the visualization. So now we can see how they're ordered nice and neat and how you have this really long tail of products. Um, <clears throat> and if you right click on the, uh, on the axis down here, you can uncheck show header and that gets rid of all the different text down there that really doesn't help us. Uh, uh, just, just five minutes, please. Um, so uh, to wrap this up, let me uh, just add in the another sum of sales, and it just duplicates what we have. And now we need to do a uh, running total. And when it does that, um, you can see it, it. It's automatically replicated the type of chart. And here's on the mark shelf. You'll notice we have all, and then we have the the first variable there and then we have the second variable there so it's the second variable that we want to change the mark type so that it's not a bar chart and we click that and change it to a line and then we make it a dual axis and then when we do that it changes our mark type for the other one which is kind of annoying let me change that back to bar and we can right click it and edit the color make that blue again or, okay, that's fine. So this is uh, the running sum of sales, uh, but we need, just need to change the, the table calculation. So if we edit it and just right click on that, we can say perform a secondary calculation. So we're gonna, for each sum of sales, we're going to sum up as we go. And then for those values, we're going to then say, what's the percent of the total number, which is right here that that, that number is now going to be 100%. So we say percent of total, and now we have how does it go to 100%. So here you can see that, you know, we have, that, that that's the point where 80% of our sales is covered by, you know, only this number of products where we have this number left. Now I left in the assignment um, some instructions uh, or a link to a tutorial that shows you how to find out what percent of products leads to what percent of sales. And that's a little bit more complex. Um, this is this is probably a little bit too complex anyways, but um, hopefully the examples will help you with the assignment and that you'll be able to uh, you know complete those, find the answers for those assignments. Um, as always, use the forums if you have any questions and see if your other students, fellow students have, uh, you know, if you have any problems, if they've already uh, overcome them. That's all for this week. Um, I'll be back with another video next week.